According to the review article titled, quote, Role of Topical Peptides in Preventing or Treating Aged Skin, unquote, by F. Garohi and H. I. Maybach, there was a mentioning about a peptide in this paper that had briefly caught my eye and it was about glycosaminoglycans. Before I bring this peptide up, I should first note that glycosaminoglycans, also known as mucopolysaccharides, are a type of sugar molecule found throughout the body. They are made up of repeating sugar pairs and play various roles depending on their specific chemical makeup. Goruhi and Maybach mentioned that tripeptide 1 have been combined with palmitic acid to create paltripeptide 1, also known as biopeptide CL. Research done both in vitro and in vivo has shown that biopeptide CL helps stimulate the production of collagen and glycosaminoglycans, which are important for maintaining healthy skin. However, it's also important for healthy hair. Also, this is where the mentionings of glycosaminoglycans caught my eye. Minoxidil, commonly used for hair growth, has a notable effect on the biosynthesis of glycosaminoglycans, such as heparin sulfate, partially oversulfated chondroitin sulfate, and hyaluronic acid in the extracellular matrix around hair follicles. This action supports a better environment for hair growth by enhancing the scaffolding where hair follicles reside. The study, quote, Sulfation of minoxidil in keratinocytes and hair follicles and the stimulatory effect of minoxidil on the biosynthesis of glycosaminoglycans, unquote, by Y. Mori, T. Hamamoto, and S. Otomo, found that minoxidil undergoes sulfation in hair follicles and proliferating keratinocytes, which is a key step in its mode of action. This process not only enhances glycosaminoglycans production in these cells, but also shows minoxidil's role goes beyond merely improving blood flow to the hair follicles, indicating a direct and multifaceted influence on hair growth mechanisms. Now, looking at the review that Guruhi and Maybach did, they note that combining tripeptide 1 with palmitic acid forms paltripeptide 1, also known as biopeptide CL, which has been shown to stimulate the production of collagen and glycosaminoglycans, crucial for maintaining healthy skin. Integrating this with a sulfotransferase booster, like tretinoin, which enhances minoxidil's efficacy, as it noted in the study titled, quote, Efficacy of 5% minoxidil versus combined 5% minoxidil in 0.01% tretinoin for male pattern hair loss, a randomized double-blind comparative clinical trial, unquote, could potentially further augment the skin and hair follicle environment in a super-enhanced state of growth. My thinking is that while tretinoin boosts sulfotransferase activity, enhancing minoxidil's effectiveness, the addition of biopeptide CL could simultaneously boost glycosaminoglycan levels. This combination might provide a more robust approach to promoting more effective hair growth by reinforcing the structural matrix around hair follicles. So hey, actually, I'm jumping in this video real quick because there's been some news, right? So the video you just watched right now was recorded months ago, and I'm kind of clipping it up from a longer video so you guys can watch it. Again, because not many people watch super long videos that were like two hours long. But anyway, researchers at the University of Sheffield and Comstat University of Pakistan, I think that's how you would pronounce it, have unveiled an intriguing development in the field of hair loss treatment with their study on 2-deoxy-D ribose, or 2-D-DR. I'll be calling it 2-D-DR henceforth. And this is a naturally occurring sugar found in humans and, well, other animals and it's shown the potential in stimulating hair growth, albeit this was in a mouse model, which was their study. While the biology of a mouse, and I think this is needless to say, um, the biology of a mouse hair differs significantly from human hair, the result of the study, I think, does give us some curiosity on how 2DDR could potentially be adapted for human hair use. Now, 2DDR functions possibly by enhancing blood flow supply to hair follicles or by some sort of other stimulatory mechanism and it appears to be distinct from the role of glycosaminoglycans. Now I mentioned previously that glycosaminoglycans seem to be a byproduct after minoxidil sulfate reaches the hair follicle. I think in that previous study I was talking about mouse hair or sorry mice hair but I think in other studies it also holds to be true that glycosaminoglycans are some sort of early sign that the hair 
is starting to grow or the carinitocytes are starting to differentiate themselves. But in general, um, what we know about glycosaminoglycans is that they have an ability to support skin and hair follicle health by maintaining hydration and also facilitating nutrient delivery within the extracellular matrix. Now, in contrast, 2DDR seems to directly stimulate growth factors like VEGF, which also could enhance follicular blood flow and potentially augment in a more direct way the antigen phase of hair growth. Now, while both compounds are indeed naturally occurring in the human body and other animals' body, and they contribute to the structural and functional support of hair follicles, their methods of action, at least to me, seem to diverge on the cellular level. The curiosity now is whether 2DDR can be as effective in human hair as it is in mice. And to explore this, obviously, there needs to be some sort of human clinical trial or maybe an ex vivo trial where they use human hair to see what actually goes on. Now, this isn't simply just putting 2DDR on our scalps and then calling it a day. No, there needs to be some sort of effective delivery system that can transport 2DDR to maybe the hair follicles or the derma papilla of the hair follicle structure. And maybe there we can witness the stimulatory effects of 2DDR. Now, when it comes to glycosaminoglycans, glycosaminoglycan support could be used in the extracellular matrix. Maybe having an increased amount of certain glycosaminoglycans can provide more structure for the hair follicle to actually build itself, right, in a more robust kind of way. Maybe within one cycle, you'll probably get a super, super strong strain of hair because there's more of that building block material that can be utilized from the extracellular matrix. And also there's other things like potentially we could stack 2DDR with known growth stimulants like minoxidil or latanoprost, bimatoprost, or other prostaglandin analogs that could amplify its effects and provide a better hair growth cycle. Now, the study did touch on this combination when it came to the mice, where they noted there was no significant gains from using 2DDR in conjunction with minoxidil in mice. However, the interaction could yield different outcomes in human subjects, making it an area ripe for further explanation. In general, the logical next step would be to conduct clinical trials involving human participants to confirm the safety and efficacy of 2DDR, both alone and in combination with other treatments like minoxidil and potentially glycosaminoglycans. Let's say that glycosaminoglycans could possibly provide for a more robust hair growth cycle if you use 2DDR in conjunction with minoxidil. Perhaps the bottleneck could be that there's not enough glycosaminoglycans in the extracellular matrix. I'm just spitballing here, but all these things are curious to me and they really, you know, ignite some sort of passion. So I think this is excellent news. Anytime I hear about a hair growth stimulant on the market or potentially coming to the market or being researched in some kind of way, I'm excited about it because I think when it comes to blocking DHT, we're, we're already at that point, right? We're at that point, we have dutasteride, it's very effective, and between 0.5 up to 2.5 milligrams of dutasteride, you can look at a scalp DHT reduction between 50 to up to potentially 80%, right? Now we just need something that is very, very potent and safe that can make our hair follicles go into overdrive and start producing thick, luscious, robust hair. And that's, you know, where peptides, I think, come in. That's where the next phase is, hair growth stimulants. So this was a bit of an ad hoc recording. I had to include this because I just, I just could, couldn't not include this with the new news that came out. So that's the end of this clip. We're going to go into the next video. So yeah, thanks for watching, guys.